Hello, soon to be licensed nurse practitioners, Miss Cohen here. And upon request, I've created a UTI treatment blog because many of you are confused as to how to treat a UTI. Um, just like in pharmacology, it can get confusing because there's always multiple answers that are correct, but there's always a better answer. And I want to um, present to you the best treatment for acute um acute simple UTI for women, uh, acute complicated UTI for women, uh, UTI for men, UTI in pregnancy, and UTI in pediatrics, and certainly the pharmacology. So let's talk about these. UTI or urinary tract infections, also known as cystitis or pyelonephritis, depending. So cystitis is an infection of the bladder or lower urinary tract. Pyelonephritis is an infection of the kidneys or upper urinary tract. Symptoms of UTI include dysuria, urinary frequency, urinary urgency, and or superpubic pain, to name a few. Always, always, always obtain a UA in culture just to make sure you're treating the causative organism infection appropriately. And for the most part, E. coli is the most common pathogen of UTI. Now we have acute simple cystitis and complicated cystitis. Let's talk about the differences because the treatments will differ. Acute simple cystitis is a UTI that is presumed to be confined to the bladder. There are no signs or symptoms that suggest upper tract or systemic infection. Now, acute complicated cystitis, on the other hand, is an acute UTI accompanied by signs and symptoms that suggest extension of infection beyond the bladder, such as a fever of greater than 99.9, chills, rigor, significant fatigue or malaise beyond baseline, or other features of systemic illness, flank pain, costovertebral angle tenderness. Remember, that's when you pound on the back, and if it's tender, if it causes pain, then it's a positive sign for costovertebral angle tenderness, pelvic or perineal pain in men. So now that you understand the differences between simple versus complicated, let's see how we treat each for female acute simple cystitis, female acute simple cystitis, first line will always be your nitroferrin twin or your macrovid, 100 milligrams VAD times five days. Then you have your uh, Bactrim, which is 160 slash 800 milligrams VAD times three days. You could also give phosphomycin three grams once. Now, let me just point out, this would be a good choice if you get a patient who's non-compliant. If for whatever reason you think this patient will not be compliant with the medication regimen, will stop the medication halfway, um, maybe some, maybe it's an older female, I don't know, uh, with some mentation issues, phosphomycin, once, done. This is a good choice. Uh, trimethoprim is another good choice for first line, 100 milligrams BID times three days. If for whatever reason you cannot give any of these drugs, say um, allergies, second line is for the most part your beta lactam. These include your augmentin, 500 milligrams BID, five to seven days, cefpodoxin, 100 milligrams BID, five to seven days, cefnadir, 300 BID times five to seven days, cefadroxyl, 500 milligrams BID, five to seven days, or cefalexin. 250 to 500 milligrams every six hours or times five to seven days. To keep it very, very simple, just remember beta lactam, second line for the most part, augmentin is a good choice, augmentin. So remember that one. Now, for whatever reason, you can't give a first line or a second line because of allergies in this case. Third line would be your fluoroquinolone. This is your Cipro, 250 milligrams VID times three days. Or you can give 500 extended release times three days. Or your levofloxacin, 250 milligrams times three days. Now, I'm sure you're thinking or you have heard, for the most part, Cipro is for down under the belt. Levoquin is for above the belt for like respiratory infections. Well, in the real world, both are fluoroquinolones. They both can be used for UTIs. You hear of Cipro more often. But don't get shocked if levofloxacin is one of your answers. It may not be a, uh, a bad choice. So just know it's a possibility as well. Now, male acute simple cystitis. Uh, simple cystitis, 
uh, very similar to the female nitroferrin toin or your macrobid, uh, your um, your Bactrim, your phosphomycin, and your trimethoprim. And you can see the dosages there. Um, it used to be said that male cystitis would always be treated and considered as complicated. That's not the case now. Um, if it's simple, and we talked about the difference between simple and complicated, you treat it like shown here. And if it's complicated, if it's got systemic symptoms, then Cipro, which is your big guns, or Levofloxacin. And that also applies to the female. If you find that you're treating a complicated cystitis, you would use your big guns, your Cipro, your Levofloxacin. Now, UTI symptomatic management. Symptoms of acute simple cystitis should respond to antimicrobial therapy within 48 hours. Dysuria is usually diminished within a few hours of having started antimicrobial therapy. So if you get a question on the exam that it's been over 48 hours, let's say four days, five days, and the patient is still symptomatic and they report compliance to the medication, then perhaps you're not treating it correctly. Perhaps the causative organism is something else, hence why the cultures are so important. Those usually take about two or three days to come back, but you would want to go back to those and see, hey, perhaps I'm not treating it with the right antibiotic. Let's see what the cultures show and then prescribe something accordingly. As for the dysuria or other urinary symptoms, uh, you can always recommend an over-the-counter pyridium or azo. This is your phenosopyridine that you can take up to three times a day as needed for the burning sensation of urination. But remember, patient education is important with this drug. It can change the color of your urine to this almost like fluorescent orange. So give them the heads up so they don't freak out when they go to the bathroom and see that their urine is almost like a fluorescent orange, okay? As for pregnancy and the treatment of this uh, cystitis, urinary tract infections are common in pregnant, especially because as the baby is growing, it's make, putting pressure against the urethra, making it shorter, shorter, and shorter in distance. Easier for E. coli, for example, to make its way in because of the shorter distance. Hence why men have a penis and it's much longer track for the pathogen to get in. That's why UTIs are not that common for men because it's much longer of a distance for the pathogen to travel. With pregnancy, we treat asymptomatic bacteriuria. So pregnant women will go for the regular checks and it's common that they'll do a urine sample on every single visit. If it comes back for bacteria in the urine, even if they're asymptomatic, you treat, you treat. Now, how do you treat? Well, nitro, you could give, you wanna avoid it on the first trimester. Now, let me make one thing clear. It is not an absolute. Um, you got to do the risk versus the benefit. So if you can't give anything else, nitro would be okay, but preferably avoid it on the first trimester. Now remember, amoxicillin, um, it's a great drug for pregnancy, for children, very benign. You have two options how to treat, either 500 milligrams every eight hours, five to seven days, or eight to 75 every 12 hours for five to seven days. Augmentin, great choice. Again, your beta-lactam, 500 milligrams every eight hours, five to seven days, or give them Augmentin 875 every 12 hours, which is an easier thing to take, right? Every 12 hours, five to seven days. Cephalexin is not a bad choice, 250 to 500 milligrams every 12 hours, five to seven days. Cephpodoxime, of cephpodoxime, 100 milligrams every 12 hours, five to seven days. Again, your phosphomycin, not a bad choice for your non-compliant population. Three grams, single dose, that's it. And you could give Bactrim. Just keep in mind that both Bactrim and Nitro are frowned upon uh, on the first and third trimester. There's something said about jaundice to the baby. Um, it is not an absolute contraindication, but some literature uh, frowns upon these two drugs. So listen. Just go with Augmentin. Augmentin is such an easy, easy drug. So uh, sulfa, sulfa drugs are not big on the third trimester. So remember that uh, trimethoprim or Bactrim and nitro first third trimester. If you can avoid it, that would be great. 
go with your augmented. Some authors recommend not taking sulfa on the uh, after 32 weeks because of a higher chance of severe jaundice related to complications in the baby. That's why. As for pediatric treatment of UTI, cephalosporins do very, very well. First line agent in children without genitourinary abnormalities. This is your cefexime, cefnadir, and ceftibutin orals, right? I'm not even giving you the IV uh, options because we are primary care, so don't even worry about those. Cephalosporins, really good for with children. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this has clarified the UTI treatments for all different types of population. Again, I've kept it very simple for the purposes of the nurse practitioner boards, regardless which one you're taking. This pretty much covers everything you need to know as for UTI treatments. I hope you enjoyed this blog. Best of luck with your studies. And if you ever have any questions, certainly send me an email to shira at thecovidreview.com. Best of luck.